Hello guys, welcome to today's lesson. Today we're going to continue our study of limits and we're going to study three concepts, three new concepts, which are the following. We're going to calculate limits using graphs. And if you observe in here, what we have is a Cartesian plane, the x-axis for my independent variable and the y-axis for my dependent variable or for the values of the function. And in blue, we observe the graph of the function, okay, just a section. It can go on in both directions. And basically, we can find the limit of a function by using the graph in a very simple way. All we need to do is, for example, if we, if we want to calculate the limit as x approaches a of my function, function f of x, all I need to know is observe what value the function acquires okay, in this case L, when the value of X is A. So for this particular value of X for A, we can observe that the value of the function is L. And that's it. Just by observing the graph, by observing this point, we can conclude that the limit of F as X approaches A is L. We're gonna, we're gonna see this in a moment with several examples. Uh, the second thing is infinite limits. What does this mean? Okay, what this means is the following. First, I'm going to read this for you, these two things. We say the following. The limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals L. And another infinite limit is the following. The limit as x approaches a specific number a, or as x approaches a, that's enough, of the function f is equal to infinity. What does this mean? It means in the first case, let's let's in the first case, let's look at this one. In this one, what we want to do is let x grow infinitely. Okay? We we're, we're going to get we're going to let x grow more and more and more and more and more, okay? To through values which are extremely large. I don't know 1000, 1 million, 1 million million, etc. And we're going to observe if the value of the function f approaches a specific number. That happens sometimes, okay? And the other type of infinite limit is when the, the, the reverse happens. When you make x approach a specific number, a definite number, for example, I don't know, let's say 3, and your value of the function grows to infinity, okay? Again, you're going to be understanding this in a moment through the use of graphs. And finally, we're gonna look at one-sided limits. What is this? It's when we approach x to a number, to a specific number, through different routes. This is the key phrase, through different routes or through different paths, so to speak. Again, first I'm gonna read to you how this is supposed to be read so that you understand these two uh, symbologies. We read this in the following way. The limit as x approaches a from the right, that's, that's how you use this plus, the limit as x approaches a from the right of f is equal to m. That's how this is read. And, and please notice that the plus sign goes to the right of the number. If you write this, that would be incorrect, okay? And the other symbology, this, this phrase, this mathematical phrase, it's read in the following way. The limit as x approaches a from the left of f is equal n, okay? We're going to see what, what this means in a moment. So let's go to, to the examples. Okay, guys, so the first thing, like I said before, we're going to go into calculating limits of functions through graphs. Okay, what exercises am I going to use to uh, exemplify this topic or this uh, this technique? The ones that I left as homework. You're, okay, you, have, you, you, you had six exercises, these ones as homework, remember? So I want you to have them by your hand right there with you so we can check them. Okay. 
So the first thing I'm going to tell you is the answers for all of these limits. Of course, you don't see the limit here. Uh, I cannot write that symbology in, in this program, I think. But I'm going to tell you the, the answers. The limit of this function as x approached minus 2 is going to be minus 1. So please check. The limit of the second function as x approaches 5 is going to be 1 fifth or 0 0.2. The limit of the third function as x approaches 1 half is going to be minus 4. The limit of the fourth function as x approaches minus 3 will be minus 4. The limit of cosine of x as x approaches 0 is 1. And the limit of this rational function as x approaches minus 4 is going to be minus 1. So those are the answers. And uh, you, you, you resolve these this exercises either by plotting the tables or just by evaluating. Remember that in most cases, just a quick evaluation can give you the number, can give you the answer to the limit. Okay, no, so let's now use the graphs in order to find those same answers, but now through the use of graphs. How do we do it? It's extremely simple. Look. Okay, so in here we have the function of uh, x plus 1, which was the first example. You see, we have here x plus 1. And the limit that we want to approach or we want to calculate is when x approaches minus 2. So what do you do in order to calculate that limit with a graph? What you do is this. You pick, I mean, the number minus 2 is, over, is right here, right? And this is the point which corresponds to minus 2, this exact point. So what you do is basically you pick a point in the in the graph, for example, this one. For this point, the value of x is 0 0.77, and the value of the function is 1.77, OK? And all you do is approach it towards the value that you want, which is minus 2, which I'm going to do right now, little by little. You see, I'm going to approach the number minus 2. I'm approaching it. I'm approaching it. And you can see that as I approach the number minus 2 in the first coordinate, the value of the function approaches, <coughs> oops, sorry, approaches minus 1. Can you see? We're getting closer and closer and closer and closer. We're almost there. We're almost there. Almost, almost, and remember, we never really touch that value. Let's just keep it right there. So we can see that, that as x approaches minus 2, the value of the function is approaching minus 1. We never touch, we never do this. Uh, uh, we never do that. Never. Okay? So one more time. I'm approaching it from this side. And we can see that the value of the function or the limit approaches minus 1. Perfect. And I can do the same from the other side, okay? I can approach the value of minus 2 from the left, from left to right, in such a way. And we can see that we get the same result. As x approaches minus 2, the value of the function approaches minus 1. It's very easy, right? Okay. So this one is done. Uh, perhaps um, I'm just going to go over two or three of these because I don't want to waste so much time. Okay, this one. The value of this function or the limit as x approaches 5. So where is my number 5? In the x-axis, it's right here. So I pick a number or a point, and I approach the number 5, and I try to see to what number is the, the function approaching. You see, we're approaching the number 5 in the x-axis, and the function is approaching the number 0 0.2, like we said before. You see? We get closer and closer, but we never get there. You see? It's almost 0.2. When, when x is almost 5, the function is almost 0 0.2. And therefore, we say that the limit of the function as x approaches 5 is 0 0.2. And the same if I approach from the right. We are approaching 5 in the x-axis. 
and the value of the function approaches 0 0.2. Perfect. Let me go with the fourth example, and I think that would be enough. I, I get by I, I think by now you get the idea. Okay, remember that the function number four and the number six is where we can have some problems in regards to the evaluation. For example, for this function, if I want to calculate the limit of this function when x approaches minus three, I cannot just evaluate the function in minus three because if I do that, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna do it very quickly right here. I'm gonna get minus three to the square plus 2 times minus 3, minus 3, this is the whole numerator, over minus 3, plus 3, right? And when we perform these operations in the numerator and the denominator independently, we're going to get 0 over 0. And we get, uh, th there is nothing wrong with 0 being on the numerator. This is perfectly okay. The problem is this one, okay? The 0 on the denominator. So this is known in mathematics as an indefinite or undefined expression. We don't know what this means. So basically, we cannot evaluate like in the other functions in order to find the limit. We need to uh, get another approach. And that approach is either by the table, by plotting the table, or even easier by, by using the graph of this function. When you graph this function, you get this straight line. And we approach the number minus 3, which is right here. Okay, so I pick a number, and I'm going to approach minus 3, as you can see. We're, we're appro approaching the number minus 3 in the x-axis, and we observe to what number is the function approaching. You see? As x approaches minus 3, we can observe that the function approaches minus 4. But we never touch such values. You see? And the same from the left. From left to right, we get the same thing. When x approaches minus 3, the value of the function approaches minus 4. Now, let me tell you something that you may already know by now. Uh, look, at, look at what happens when I put myself in this precise point when x is minus 3. Let's see what happens. Look. You can see that the point is filled. Like, uh, it has a, a solid color blue. And then when I touch that point, look what happens. You see? It became a, a void. Why? Because this function is, like I told you, is not defined for, oops, for the number minus 3. Okay? It has no value when x is equal to minus 3. Why not? Because you cannot evaluate this function in minus 3 because you get a 0 in the denominator. So basically... This is, uh, this is the, the software telling you that this, this point, this precise point, does not exist for this function, okay? But you can get as, as close as you, as you want to that point, and there is no problem, you see? As close as you want, but never, never be there. Never. And that's why the concept of limit is very important, because it lets you know to what value the function approaches when x approaches a certain number without really being there. You just get you, you just get closer and closer and closer. Okay, so I think that's that's enough for this first uh, this first uh, idea of how to use graphs in order to calculate limits. As you can see, it's extremely 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 simple. Okay, the next idea we're gonna learn today is that of infinite limits. Infinite limits. What does that mean? Okay, let's calculate, let's graph this function, the, the, the exponential function. Uh, you should know by now the graph of this function, right? You should be uh, somewhat familiar with it. Looks like this, right? It grows very quickly. That's why we say that things uh, grow exponentially because, you know, for x equals 1, you get this number. For x equals 2, you get almost eight, and it grows it, it grows extremely quickly. Okay, and in the other side of the y-axis, like to the left, what we observe is this behavior, right? The graph of the function goes 
and gets very close to the x-axis, very close. If we zoom in, you can see that it, go, it, it gets very, very close. It never really touches the x-axis, as you can see, but it gets closer and closer. So let's see what we mean when we say something like this, guys. For example, this is a function, okay? And I want to calculate the limit of this function, the limit of the function e to the x as x approaches minus infinity. Okay, what would be the answer for this? What would be the answer for the limit of, of this function e to the x as x approaches minus infinity? Okay, let's see what that means. What that means is the following. That you're going to, again, you're going to pick a number, a point in here, in the graph, and you're going to let it <coughs> go towards minus infinity, okay? Basically, you want to go as far away as possible from the y-axis, okay, or from your origin, towards the left, towards minus infinity, okay? Further and further and further away. So let's see what happens when that, when we do that. So I'm going to let x approach minus infinity. Right now, x is minus 1, and the value of the function is 0 0.3. Right now, x is minus 2, approximately, and the value of the function is 0 0.1. And we do that more and more and more, okay? Right now, x is minus 5, and as you can see, the function is 0 0.007, so it's almost 0. Okay, right now the, the value of x is minus 6 and the function is 0 0.003. It's almost nothing. Let's continue the process. I'm going to zoom in. At this point, x is minus 7 and the value of the function is 0 0.0009. It's almost, it's almost 0, you see? And as we do that and as we let x... Uh, uh, get closer to minus infinity, we can observe that the value of the function is approaching what number? Can you guess? Look. It gets very close to zero. And more and more and more and more. Okay? So basically, what, what would you conclude for this limit? As, the, as, as x approaches minus infinity, the value of the function will be zero okay uh, the, the function will approach zero as x approaches minus infinity and this is what we know as an infinite limit okay why why infinite well, well because we're letting x approach either minus infinity or plus infinity okay so this is what is known as an infinite limit when when one of your limits involves the infinity that's called an infinite limit. So that's how it works, guys. Let's go with the second example. This one. Okay. So this is a rational function. It's a hyperbola. Again, I, th I think you should be familiar with this function. And it's 1 over x plus 1. And in this case, what I want to calculate is the limit of this function as x approaches positive infinity. The limit of my function, 1 over x plus 1, as x approaches positive infinity or plus infinity. What would the answer be? Let's do the same thing. Let's use the graph. And I'm going to let x grow towards infinity. So I pick any, no any point over here, and I let x grow and grow and grow Right now, x is 15, and the value of the function is 1.067. Right now, x is 20, and the value of the function is 1.05. And I'm going to do that more and more, you see? Observe towards what number the function is approaching as we let x grow. Can you see? And we can spend a lot of time doing this, okay? 
By now, you're, I, I believe you're supposed to know towards what value this limit is approaching, right? As x grows and grows more, we can see that the function approaches the number 1. Can you see? It approaches 1. And that would be the answer. Okay? The limit as x approaches plus infinity of this particular function will be 1. And this is known as an infinite limit. And as a final example, let's use a very well-known function, the quadratic function, which we know is a parabola, right? Okay. I put it right here. Okay. And I'm going to do something different here. I'm going to calculate the limit as x approaches infinity of this function, x squared, and let's see what happens to the limit of this function when x approaches infinity. We do the same thing. I pick just a, a value and I, I let x grow. And observe what's happening to the value of the function. Right now, the, the value of x is 5 and the function is 25. Right now, the function is, I'm sorry, the x is 6 and the value of the function is 40. And we can go on forever, you know. Right now, the value of the, fun of the x is 10 and the value of the function is 100. So what do you think is going to happen when we let x grow more and more and more and more? Okay. Towards what value is the function approaching? Can you see? Do you, do you believe it's approaching a specific value or it's also growing without limit? Okay. X is growing. But look at what happens to the function. It's also growing, right? Like crazy. So basically, we can conclude that the limit of this function, x squared, as x grows to infinity, or as x grows uh, more and more and more, that's another way to say it, will also be infinity, right? Okay? Because if x grows towards very large numbers, the function x squared also is going to grow towards large numbers. I think that's, that's very clear to understand. Because we're multiplying large numbers by themselves, uh, by having this square, right? So this is also an infinite limit because it's involving, in this case, an, an approach to infinity. And we also get infinity as the answer. Okay, so that's more or less how infinite limits work. And let's go towards the last idea. Okay, the last idea is one-sided limits. And I'm going to try to do this one even quicker. This, is, this idea is the idea of one-sided limits. Okay, let's see. So we have this function, 1 over x. This is its graph. And I want to calculate the limit as x approaches 0 of this particular function. What would be the answer? OK, let's observe the graph. And let's try to perform the calculation using the graph, the calculation of this limit. So like I said, you're going to pick any point in the graph. And you're going to approach that point towards the value of x that you were given, in this case, 0. So 0 is here. And let's see what happens. OK, if I take a point from this side of the graph, from the right, and I approach 0 from the left, I'm sorry, from the right towards the left, like I'm doing right now, you can see that as x approaches 0, what is happening to the value of the function? Look, x is approaching 0. And you can see that the value of the function starts to grow very quickly, right? Look, it's going to grow and grow. Can you see? X is approaching 0. 
and the value of the function is shooting upwards towards very large numbers. I'm gonna start here, look. X is approaching zero, and the function is approaching very large numbers very quickly. You see? And and the same is gonna keep keep going. As we, as x approaches zero, the function approaches extremely large numbers very quickly. And you can see you can see from the velocity of the point, you can see that right now, you see? Okay, so what we say is that as x approaches zero, but we have to add something else from the right, like from the right to the left, the the limit of this function is going to be plus infinity because the, the values of the function start to grow very quickly, okay, towards plus infinity. But if we try to do the same, if we try to approach towards zero from the other side, from the left towards the right, we're going to have a different answer. Look. If I try to also to approach the zero, which is right here, but from the left towards the right, you're going to see what happens. Look at the values of the of x and the values of the function. As x approaches zero, you can see that the values of the function are approaching minus infinity. You see, right? Right now, the, the value of x is minus 0 0.1, and the value of the function is minus 7. And as I do that more and more, as I get closer to 0, you can see that the values of the function decrease infinitely. Or they, they, they tend, they, they approach minus infinity. Can you see? More and more and more and more. Okay, you get the idea? Let me zoom in a little bit. Look, x is approaching zero, and the values of the function approach minus infinity always, closer and closer and closer. And this and this this behavior will not stop. As x approaches zero, the function will approach minus infinity. Okay? But it will never touch it. So what are we saying here? We say that the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of this function will be minus infinity. You see? So basically, we have a different idea here. We have the idea that as x approaches a specific number, even though it's the same number, okay, x is approaching 0 in both cases but doing it by different routes or different paths. That's what I meant uh, in the first slide of this lesson. By different paths, from this is from the right or from, from right to left, you get that the limit is plus infinity. On the other hand, when you approach zero from the left towards the right, you get that the answer is different. In this case, it's minus infinity. So you have to be aware of, of this uh, of this concept, okay? Because this happens often. Uh, when x approach a certain number by different routes, you may get different answers. It doesn't happen all the time, all the times, but it, it may happen, okay? Uh, in the first examples that I showed you, let me, let's go back here. Let's go with the very first function that we that we treated. For example, this one, and this is the function x plus 1. If I want to calculate the limit of this function when x approaches 1, okay, if I do so from the right, what is my result? 2, right? And if I do so from the left, it's going to be also 2. So no problem, you see? From both directions, from the right or from the left, we get the same answer, which is not the case for certain specific functions and for certain specific values. Okay, I don't want you to believe that that it's gonna that for this function, the same is gonna happen for 
for any value. Oh no, I'm, I'm doing it backwards. Okay, let, let me let me tell you what I mean. This behavior of one-sided limits being different only happens for this particular function only happens when x approaches zero. But what if x approached, let's say one? Okay, here is well no two the, the number two so that we can see it. If x approaches two from the right, let's see what we get. It's approaching two. It's approaching two. And the function will approach 0 0.49. 0 0.5. It's approaching 0 0.5, right? From the right, as x approaches 2, the function approaches 0 0.5. That's very clear. And the same is going to happen if we approach from the left. You see, as x approaches 2, the function approaches 0.5. So in this case, uh, both one-sided limits from the right and from the left are the same. But when x approaches 0, you're going to have different results. Okay? So that's how this, this idea of one-sided limits uh, work, guys. And I'm going to stop it right here. I think it's enough material for today. And let's solve the questions. I'm sorry, the exercises.